Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Mr. Red Skelton in The Search for Isabel, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Hey, Hap, did you hear about the super snook from Sandy Hook who found Snoo in his car? Snoo? What's Snoo? Nothing. What's new with you? Oh, Harlow, that's really pretty corny. It sure is, but it just shows how easily you can be fooled. Now, take automobile batteries, for instance. They look alike, but there's only one Autolite stay-full battery. The difference? Autolite stay-full batteries need water only three times a year in normal car use. In addition, Autolite stay-full batteries have a fiberglass retaining mat at every positive plate for longer battery life. The fact is, in recent tests based on SAE life cycle standards, Autolite stay-full batteries gave up to 70% longer average life than batteries without stay-full features. So get an Autolite stay-full battery. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the search for Isabel, and with the performance of Red Skelton, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. You know, Isabel first came into my life when I received a card from the telephone company stating that my application for a phone had been approved and they were going to install one in my apartment. Well, I left instructions with the apartment house management to uh, let the service man in. But when I got home from work that evening, there was the telephone as big as life sitting there on the night table. Well, I just looked at it for a minute, like I'd never seen the phone before. Gosh, it started to ring. I about jumped out of my skin. I just let it ring a couple of times. Just wanted to hear it. To me, it sounded like the bells of St. Mary. Hello? Is Isabel LaRue in, please? Oh, I'm sorry. You must have the wrong number. Is this Evergreen 31924? Uh, take a look. Yes, Evergreen 31924. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't Miss LaRue there? No, this phone was just installed. This must be her old number. Oh, I'm sorry to have troubled you. Thank you. Oh, no trouble at all. I wouldn't have thought much about the call, except by next Saturday I'd had a dozen more just like it. And most of them were men. But it interested me. Any gal that gets around like that must interest a guy. So I decided that the next time I would try to find out a little further. Hello? Harold Mason's office calling for Miss LaRue. Oh, yes. Uh, put him on. Just one moment. Hello, Miss Isabel LaRue. Mr. Mason calling. Well, Miss LaRue will be right here. Put Mr. Mason on. Hello, Isabel. Harold. Well, this isn't Isabel. Who is this? Well, you see, this is Dick Brown. Isabel LaRue used to have this number. You know, I would appreciate it very much if you could tell me any other way I could get a hold of her. You see, I get quite a few calls and... Hello? Hello, Mr. Mason? Hello? He hung up. Why, I don't know. But one thing I found out was that little Isabel, if nothing else, must know the right people. A guy like Mason who has got to go through two secretaries to make a phone call must have a couple of chips. She was beautiful, no doubt about that. She must have to be. They get so many calls from so many different guys. And the right kind, too. She was very mysterious. Or why else would they hang up when I ask about her? She was tall, willowy, very sophisticated, a blonde. No, a brunette. And a lot of fun. I drew a mental picture of her as a gag just to see how close I'd come when I actually met her. Well, I finally dozed off. She must be beautiful and lovely. Beautiful, tall, maybe a redhead. Oh. That's it. 
Come on, just a little further. That's a boy. You're... Who else? Isabel. Of course. Oh, you are lovely. So beautiful. Just as I pictured. Thanks, Dick. You're pretty swell yourself. Oh, what am I? Come here. Oh? Well, you wouldn't. Afraid? Of course not. It's just... What? A... Well, what are you doing with me? I'm just a common bank clerk. What about Mr. Mason? Harold, he bores me terribly. Oh? Look, every man is at my fingertips. Yeah, that's what I mean. If I wanted them, I'd be with them. Instead, I'm with you. You only want something you haven't got. Once you have it or know you can get it, you love with your heart, not your mind. Oh, I do love you. Put your arms around me. Oh. Kiss me. <coughs> the alarm clock broke it up just when it was getting good. Well, the next day was Sunday. It may sound kind of silly, but... I just couldn't get her or that dream off of my mind all day. Instead of ordering donuts for breakfast, I ordered two Isabels, plain. It got on my nerves. Well, the public library was open, so I wandered down, and I thumbed through the present and all the past issues of who's who, the phone books, film magazines, newspapers, and... Well, there was nothing. Not a word about Isabel LaRue. Then that night, about 11 o'clock... Hello? Let me speak to Isabel, will you? Look, she doesn't live here. The phone... Don't is... hand me that, pal. This is John Worthington, and I have to speak to LaRue, understand? I'm sorry. I can't Look, help you. Then just give Isabel this message, will Listen, you? Listen, I can't... Just tell Isabel I don't want to see her friend. I want to see her. And if she don't call me by tomorrow morning and tell me she'll give me another chance, that'll be all. Get it? Okay. And it'll mean plenty of trouble, too. I'll come down there to the Beverly Towers and really put on an act that she won't forget. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You got the name? John Worthington. Well... Yeah, I got it. Well, I didn't give it much thought then. That particular phone call to Isabel, that is. But the next morning at breakfast, something happened. I was drinking my coffee, and I caught the sight of the paper next to me. It was all over the front page, Playboy, Gambler. John Worthington leaps to his death from the top of the Beverly Towers. Hmm. Now, the papers had it doped out that the reason for the suicide was that John Boy was a couple hundred thousand in debt. But I, and only I, knew different. It was Isabel LaRue. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Red Skelton in The Search for Isabel. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hey, Harlow, what's this I hear about you being tossed out of the zoo for annoying the animals? I can't figure it out, Hap. Well, what were you up to when they hustled you off? I was standing at the camel enclosure, mm -hmm. thinking about Autolite stay full batteries, of course. <laughs> so I turned to the nearest dromedary and said, you know, you guys are overrated. Why, when it comes to carrying water, you're damp rags compared to Autolite stay full batteries. Did you know that Autolite stay full batteries need water only three times a year in normal car use? Well, that camel just curled up and cried. And that's when you were bounced. Mm-hmm. But on the way out, I told the keeper that Autolite Stay Full batteries have over three times the liquid reserve above the plates than ordinary batteries. In addition, each one of these positive plates is protected with a fiberglass retaining mat for longer battery life. The fact is, in recent tests based on SAE life cycle standards, Autolite Stay Full batteries gave up to 70% longer average life than batteries without Stay Full features. So, friends, see your neighborhood Autolite battery dealer today and get an Autolite Stay Full battery for your car. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our star, Red Skelton, with Kathy Lewis in The Search for Isabel, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Yes, sir, this millionaire playboy and gambler, John Worthington, 
had jumped to his death from the top of the Beverly Towers. I knew it was on account of LaRue. And the worst part of it was that two or three times during the day, I caught myself not blaming him. I dreamed about her all the time now. It was getting so bad that I was actually fond of going to sleep so I could meet her again. And suddenly one night, just as I was dropping off, I thought of something. The Beverly Towers. A clue. I would ask her. Dick. Dick. Mm -hmm. Dick. I love you. I love you. Isabel, are you at the Beverly Towers? Where else? Thanks, honey. The Beverly Towers is about as swanky as you can get, strictly for the white tie and ermine trade. But Isabel was different. I knew that. So different. I arrived at the Beverly Towers and I walked up to the elevator as big as life. Boy, I've never seen a joint like this. The elevators were even guilted. Your floor, sir? Well, I, um, uh... <clears throat> I'm from the FBI, uh, a T-man. Uh, what apartment is Miss, uh, Isabel LaRue's? Uh, LaRue? Uh, well, I, I, I shouldn't tell you, but, um... For how much? Money? The United States government don't tip, my boy. Yeah. It's 9.03. But look, I think you better get your information across the street, huh? The Blue Bottle Bar and Grill. Talk to the bartender. Because if you don't, I'll be in trouble. Thanks, son. We won't forget you when we crack this case. Because your government has plenty of influence in Washington. It was actually around the corner on 3rd Street. The Blue Bottle Bar and Grill. Well, I cased it. The joint. Through the window. It looked pretty rough. And, well, anyway... Uh, well, I realized it was midnight already and they were starting to close up and I was pretty tired, so I figured that tomorrow would tell the tale. A half hour later, I was back in my apartment. I got undressed and I climbed into bed. I was tired. Oh, I was so tired. Uh, hello. Hello, is Mr. Brown in, please? This is Brown speaking. Uh, this is the Mount Vernon Police Department. Police? Oh, now, don't worry. Uh, we noticed that you have the telephone number Evergreen 31924. Uh, yeah, yes, I do. Well, we're trying to locate an Isabel LaRue. Isabel? And we thought you might be getting some calls for her. Oh? Oh, you, you, you did? Uh, uh, F Floribel McCoy, you said? Uh, no, no. Isabel LaRue. No, never heard of her. Well, we're sorry to have bothered you. But, uh, look, if you do get any calls for her, try to get their names and let us know, will you? Uh, sure will. All right. Thank you. I put the receiver back on the hook. I must be going really nuts. Why did I do that for? So she's in trouble. What business is it of mine? Why didn't I tell him? Well, about after an hour, I finally went off to sleep. Isabel, look, why don't you let me alone? I don't want to, darling. Do you love me? Well, what difference does that make? A great deal. Tell me. No. I love you. Well, you couldn't. But I do. All right, I'll tell you. I love you. I need you, darling. No, no, I need you. I'm in trouble. Yeah, but what kind? Terrible trouble. Come help me. I will. Promise? I promise. Then come quick. Help me. Help me, dear. Oh, Isabella, wait a minute. Me. Wait a minute, Isabel. I forgot to ask you. What apartment are you in? 903? Where else? Where else? It was 7.30, and by 8.15 that morning, I was standing in front of 903. I was shaking like a leaf. I could feel my lower lips start to quiver. He always does that when I get nervous. I knock softly. Twice. I waited. But there was no answer. I was holding one of my new calling cards in my left hand, and I could feel it getting wet. Oh. What do you want? Well, uh, does the... Uh, <clears throat> 
I'm Mr. Brown, calling for Miss LaRue. Never heard of her. Well, she lives here. I live here, smart boy, and I go away. You live here? Who else? Now beat it, smart boy. Well, now look, I know she's in... Hey! Next time, don't pound the door off. He was a big guy in a brown pinstripe suit. I got a look at the room inside. There was another tough guy in there. He'd been holding a revolver. Well, I tried to find that elevator boy to check whether I heard him right when he said room 903 was Isabel's. But he wasn't around. So I did what else he said. I went around to the Blue Bottle Bar and Grill. Yeah, well, it be. What do you got? Oh, about a little eight-year-old scotch. Good. Huh? Chaser? Yeah. A root beer. Huh. Well, you're serious about this drinking stuff. What's the matter, you gay leave you? Well, it's worse than that. You see, I can't find her. Hey, you don't know Isabel LaRue. Isabel. Hey, just who are you, huh? Here's my card. Ah, light's kind of bad. In... Richard Brown, Municipal Bank and Trust Corporation. Uh-huh. Uh... Are you a good friend of uh, Isabel's? We had only just discussed getting married, that's all. Oh, I see. Well? Well, I don't know where she is myself, but I think this gentleman does, Mr. Brown. Oh? Hello. Hi. Mr. Brown here is looking for Isabel LaRue. Says uh, he and she was going to get married. Mm -hmm. oh. So I told him you might be able to help him, Roy. Oh, sure, sure. I know where she is right now. Oh, where? Uh, what are you drinking, pal? Oh, 80-year-old pre-war. Ah, oh, you don't want to drink that. Hey, Max, that 13 and a half year old special, huh? Right. Jeez. That's it. You know, I was about to recommend it. And, uh, here you are. Uh, not for me, Max. I'm a brandy drinker myself, Mr. Brown. Well, you must be the fella Isabel's been talking about. Come on, come on, drink up. You know... <coughs> well... <clears throat> I'm probably not the guy she's been talking about, but hmm? she's in trouble, and, and I want to help her. Oh, mm. well, of course, of course you do. Mm. Well, where is she? Mm. Well, the address is a little involved. Look, wh why don't we, uh, why don't we step in here, huh? Finish our drinks here. Oh, sure thing, sure thing. Mm. Hey. You, uh, have a car? Oh, of course. Where? Well, it's right out there. It's that, uh, gray convertible. Oh, well, fine, then. You won't have any trouble. Hey, thanks. come on, drink up. Thanks, thanks. <coughs> well, 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 how long have you known the delightful Isabel, uh, Miss LaRue, that is, Mr., uh, Mr.? Just call me Roy. Oh, thanks, Roy. Ah, forget it. Like, come on, come on, a toast. A toast to Isabel. The one and only Isabel LaRue. To Isabel, wherever she may be. <coughs> <coughs> Well, well, how long have you known the delightful Isabel, Miss LaRue, that is? Oh, but, oh, Isabel, Isabel, oh, Isabel. Well, Nick, I knew for sure I was back at my apartment with enough bandages around my head to pass for a Hindu swami, which is maybe what I should have done. I was lying on the bed and... In my left hand was clutched one of my own cards. And on the back of it was scrawled, It's a misdemeanor and so forth to say you are a member of the FBI unless such is true. Lay off trying to contact I. LaRue. Signed, sincerely, your FBI. Oh, my head was throbbing like a trip hammer. I reached over and took a couple of aspirins, and in a few minutes I was off again in the land of Nod. Isabel. Dick. Here. Look. Please, don't come near me. Why didn't you help me? I tried, honest. Don't you love me? Oh. Don't you? You know I do. Tell me again. I love you. I love you, Dick. I can't go on like this. We can't. I'm with you now. I'll always be with you. But you'll leave again. Never again. No. Well, come close to me. There. Oh, Isabel. You smell of liquor. 
Oh, well, I just had My a... big, foolish, brave boy. They give you a Mickey. They did? What else? Oh, I love you. Promise you'll always be mine. Forever. Dear. What, dear? Where are you going to go when you get up and have a nice, hot dinner? Blue bottle bar and grill? Where else? As I walked in, I detected a hush fall over the patrons. The bartender hadn't seen me yet. But when he did, his face turned the same color as the dish towel he was wearing over one shoulder. Hey, give me the same as you gave me before, only this time, not so strong. Oh, oh, it's you. Yeah, Brown's the name. You want to see a card? I, I remember. Uh, uh, that was a, a scotch, wasn't it? Yeah, you got a good memory. But not that 13 and a half year old stuff this time. Oh, sure. Uh... Hurt your head, sir? No, I always wear bandages. It holds my hair down. Ah, ah, ah. Pour above the bar, if you don't mind, so I can see it. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, that's better. Now, where is Isabel LaRue? Oh, really? I didn't have nothing to do with it. Come on, <laughs> out with it. Where is she? Please, I... She... She's in 903 Beverly Towers. 903, just as I suspected. Oh, gee, Mr. Brown, don't tell nobody I told you that they'll kill me. Oh, no, they won't. Thanks for the scotch. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Well, what kind of a gun can I get for 1750? Say a gun, gun 17. Oh. Yes, I have a practically brand new shotgun, 12 gauges. No, I was looking for a pistol. Pistol, pistol, pistol. Yes. Ah, ah, here. Here's a honey, a 38 revolver. Well, it don't look so good to me. Well, what can you expect for 1750? It shoots, and I was told very accurately. It's a deal. Ah, fine, fine. You, you will have to sign some forms here and some identification, you know, state law. And then, there I was, standing in front of room 903 in the Beverly Towers. If Isabel was in there, I was going to get her out. And this time, I knew she was in there. I reached in my pocket, and I pulled out the gun. I pulled the hammer back. I held it close to my body, so if anyone might be walking down the hall, they wouldn't see it. I started to pound on the door again. Well... That isn't smart, boy. I thought I told you not to pound. Let me in. Huh. Smart boy's got a gun. You I might get hurt. Let me in. What else? My hospitality's boundless. Come in and have a cocktail. Yeah. Thirteen half-year-old scotch cocktail, I suppose. Oh, well, where's Isabel? Oh, come now. Where is she? I know she's here. Put the rod away before you get hurt, smart boy. Hey, this morning I... Oh, hello, Roy. Come on in. You close that door behind you. Uh, I... Now, you two put your hands up. What is this? Now, both of you get over back against that wall. Look, Brown, I don't know what you're trying to prove. If you're as smart as you think you are, you'll get out of here fast. Isabel. Isabel, come out. It's okay. You... Stand back where you are. See, there either. You got hurt once, nosy. Keep quiet. Isabel! What are you waving the gun around for? Now, stand back. Are you nervous? You let Isabel go. Hey, you're shaking so bad you couldn't hit the wallpaper. Now, you stay away from that mantle. I just want to pick up this automatic, that's all. Now, stay away! Oh, uh, you're too nervous. You're out of your league, Look, smart boy. Put that gun down. Drop the rod, drop it. Don't! That's it, drop the gun. <laughs> Well, the cops were there before the last bullet had left my gun. They slapped handcuffs on me and both of them. Apparently, the only thing I'd shot was the gun out of Desimone's hands, a feat for which I'm still being complimented for. Well, the lieutenant looked across the desk at me with real respect. Gosh. Yes, sir, I, I got to hand it to you, my boy. Takes nerve to walk in on a guy like Desimone. Who's Desimone? What do you mean? Tony Desimone, the guy who tried to murder you. Yeah, but so what? What does he do? You didn't know. The biggest racketeer and bookmaker alive. Oh. Yeah, uh, it takes nerve. Does? We were waiting to catch him on something big, and you fixed it for us. Now we got him on attempted murder. Hey, how much do you owe you? Nothing. Oh, you're lucky. He owed about 200 grand in bets he'd taken off the other suckers. Guys like that poor Worthington guy, and uh, what's his name, uh, Mason? Oh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. 
Yeah, looks like Isabel LaRue is finally out of business. Oh, don't say that. Oh, why not? Please, who's Isabel LaRue? You don't know? No, tell me. Oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. Who is she? You don't know how it works, huh? Well, look, all bookies use fronts. Fronts? You mean Isabel is a front for Tony Desimone? No, no, no. Isabel LaRue is Tony Desimone. There is no such person as Isabel LaRue. No. Oh, no. Oh, well, that isn't so. Huh? Now, will you tell me why you went to all of this trouble? Well, you see, well, there was a girl, and, well, she's... Oh, oh you wouldn't understand. Tony Desimone is up in prison now. Now, wouldn't this be true if Tony Desimone was the same as Isabel LaRue? She wouldn't be coming to see me anymore now, would she? <clears throat> well, you'll have to excuse me now because it's a little late and... Well, I gotta turn in and besides... Well, we want to be alone. I'm sure you'll understand. Dad. Dad. Oh, dear Isabel. Oh, a new dress. Mm -hmm. Like it? Well, it's a little... Well, I love it, you understand, but isn't it a little daring? No. Gosh, I wouldn't want to see you wear it around anyone else. I won't, darling. I love you. And I love you. You're so handsome, strong, brave, wonderful. What else? Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Red Skelton, with Kathy Lewis. Well done, Red Skelton, well done. Well, thank you, Harlow. I've heard you as a comedian, now as a dramatic actor. Yeah. But look, have you ever done any commercial work? Well, didn't you see me sell full of brushes? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, do you want me to sell some of your Autolite uh, stay-full batteries now? Red, they practically sell themselves. Especially after we tell people that Autolite stay-full batteries need water only three times a year in normal car use. What else? Well, <laughs> that's right, Ed. <laughs> It figures that way because Autolite Stay Full batteries are star performers, just like the 400 other products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 Autolite plants coast to coast. Autolite also makes complete electrical systems for many makes of America's finest cars. Batteries, spark plugs, generators, starting motors, coils, distributors. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Insist on and get Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> Next Thursday for Suspense, Van Heflin will be our star. The play is called Murder of Aunt Delia. And it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Rene Garigank and Lucian Morawak and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Search for Isabel is an original play by Richard Vaudra. Red Skelton appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Battleground, starring Van Johnson, John Hodiak, Ricardo Montalban, and George Murphy. Red Skelton may be heard on his own Tide show for Procter & Gamble over CBS every Sunday night. Buy Autolite Stayful batteries, Autolite resistor spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.